final interview of today is with members of the infrastructure team. And this is, of course, a very important team that, that spans all the projects because it keeps us working. Uh, let's start by introductions. Tell us who you are and uh, what your role is on the team. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Clark Boylan. Uh, I'm currently the infrastructure PTL. Um, that basically means I get to, to do some of the organizational duties for the team. Um, I've been working on OpenStack and specifically with the Infra team for almost six years now, I believe. So been around doing this for, for quite some time. And my name is Paul Belanger. I, um, a, I am a core member of the infrastructure team. Uh, I don't get to do any of the organizational stuff, which is kind of awesome. Um, so I, I too have been contributing since 2012 um, uh, to the infrastructure team but only in, until 2015 is when I actually got hired on by Red Hat to work full time uh, contributing to it. Uh, but yes, it is awesome. Now, you're of course not like the others, um, you know, in, in that you don't produce a product. Do, do you all work on a six month cycle or is that sort of imposed upon you or how does that work with you guys? It's, yeah, it is a little different. Um, it's almost like our cycle is kind of offset from the other cycle because we're providing the services that the developers use that means we can't do our major updates major changes during crunch time for the developers so so we end up offsetting uh our cycle to be kind of like right near the end of a cycle and the beginning of the next cycle we typically get about a month window where we can kind of go and turn knobs and, and upgrades and, and hit things with a hammer and, and get them into the shape we want before the, the rest of the project, but the rest of OpenStack is gonna, you know, really need those things to be in tip top shape for the their release cycle. And what knobs are you turning this time? Uh, so what do we got this time around? Uh, the biggest thing, I guess, is the Zool V3 deployment. Um, it's we got that rolled out the first time around uh, early in the cycle. We've since then been improving and iterating and and you know fixing bugs, adding missing features, and so on to the point where. We're hoping that we'll have a release, an actual Zool V3 release here in, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I talked with, I've actually done two interviews with the Zool right. folks. Um, one about Zool and one about how Zool is being used in the wild. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool to watch. And, and, and more of the things I think that might not be user facing to the, the community is uh, we've done Garrett upgrades to uh, code review systems. And more specifically, from our point of view, we do control plane upgrades to the projects. So um, we we really do try to make an effort of that being seamless, so it doesn't affect uh, project releases or testing and so on and so forth. Um, and that that's primarily what keeps us busy. Uh, so upgrading from Ubuntu Xenial, or I'm sorry, Ubuntu Trusty to Ubuntu Xenial, um, rolling kernel updates for Meltdown and Spectre and, and so on and so forth. So I always like seeing the, uh, the graphs and charts that Summit. Give us some numbers. Give us some exciting numbers about your deployment. Uh, so I think it, during Meltdown patching, uh -huh. we had over 100 servers in our control plane. Um, they all run on top of OpenStack, so we're, we're dogfooding the, the project that, that we helped produce. Yeah. Um, Trying to remember numbers of, of how many jobs we've run, it, we're still at peak over over twenty thousand jobs per day during busy days. Um, we have um, about a thousand node capacity of those jobs that are dynamically building uh, across five cloud regions, um, specific to the to the um, upgrades from uh, Trusty to Xenial. Uh, that took about a week. Uh, like we we did a virtual sprint for a week uh, across multiple members, community members, and multiple time zones. Um, specifically, we had new. Uh, we've expanded the team of contributors and uh, infra root members to our team, and we used it as an onboarding session for the the newer, uh, greener infrastructure members, and, and tried to you know almost paired programming style sysadmin uh, tasks for that. It was great. They not only did we have more help, but at the same time, we were able to kind of help them, you know, it's a yeah. learning process and it, having more more eyeballs on problems and, and working through that, it, it helps speed things up. 
what do you wish that the projects, the developers on the projects, knew about the infrastructure and, and how to interact with you? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So, <laughs> go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I think over time they've done a really good job at understanding how the machinery works because it is a complex piece of machinery. And specifically to the Zool V3 um, discussions, as you said, you know, you've had two interviews and more and more common people are understanding how Zool works and node pool, and it's not this black box of CI, CD, that they just throw something in and expect something out. I mean, I, I personally find a lot of the community does take the time and energy to learn something about that. They do. I, I think another thing is, at times, I think the rest of the, the project can feel like, you know, maybe we need to live in for a while and they're busy or, you know, and, and at times that is appreciated, but at the same time, you know, we're here to ultimately to help the developers get their jobs done. And so if there's something that they feel they, they could help, need, get help from us with, they should, you know, feel willing to, to come and approach us, you know, we reachable via IRC or email or, you know, even here at, at these events, you know, drag us down in the hallway or drop by the room that we're, we're hanging out in and, and ask. And we're ultimately, that's what we're here for. And more than happy to, to help out and assist where we can. There's so much that happens day to day, but it tends to be, you know, fairly, it's, it's operating a large complex system. You know, it, there's constant little things that break or disappear or fall over. Um, I think one of the things I'm excited about that we're starting to get into uh, over the last couple of weeks is multi-arch support. Um, Lenaro has come to us with a little bit of, of ARM64 resources. And so we've got the, our, our node pool tooling, which builds test images and boots them in clouds. We've started the work to uh, actually boot in an ARM64 environment, uh, with the goal being, you know, we'll be able to run some, some set of tests on there to you know, make sure that OpenStack is, is working in, in that way. Um, so that's exciting just because you know, it's something new and, and we can prove that you know, the tooling does support it and, and, and we can show that actually by doing it rather than just you know, waving our hands and saying, hey, yeah, I know it should totally work. Well, yeah. And then um, more traditional stuff of scheduling uh, the newer LTS images for testing, such as Ubuntu Bionic. Um, we need to jig our tooling to ensure that we can produce images. Uh, and then the fun of what does it look like to migrate all of the projects from uh, a Xenial LTS to the newer LTS while still supporting older stable branches. That tends to take a little bit of time and thinking around that. But once, once the technical stuff is done. There's also been work to get a, a rolling Linux distribution supported in our test environment. So one of the things that is, is exciting is we now have a rolling release Linux distribution in our, in our system, uh, OpenSUSE's Tumbleweed. Uh, from our users, we've, we've often been asked to be able to test like latest and greatest kernel, latest and greatest, latest and greatest kernels. Uh, OVS, for example, is often pushing new features and bug fixes into to newer releases. Um, and it's difficult when you're operating on, on more long-term support distribution because their mission is to provide stability to the user, which is also good for us because you know we don't want to have to be tracking down bugs and issues all the time. But at the same time, being able to, to hand a, a very recent rolling release distribution to our users and say, you know, look, it will probably break you, but you get to kind of test out the new shiny and, and kind of make sure that you know whatever new kernel feature is coming out that you think is going to help you out actually does or doesn't and we haven't actually really deployed any of it yet but the the images are there and it'll be exciting to see how we we actually manage to take advantage of that and then i guess the final one that i had was uh to continue on the trend of us hire of not hiring i'm sorry like onboarding two new users this term we still like clark says we're very approachable if you're interested in sysadmin debugging troubleshooting this complex system is is probably the perfect place to get involved with that. There's always something new to work on. There's never a dull day. And if there is, let's like like Clara says, there's areas of just asking what's what needs help to be worked on and getting involved with that. Thank you so much. And I look forward to talking with you again six months from now. Cool. <laughs> well thank you. Great, thanks.